Howdy folks and welcome to Coffee Tools. This is the most professional laser uh, that I've had in the shop so far to date. So it's a laser, it's an engraver, and it'll also cut, of course, it'll, you know, cut wood, what have you, thin, thin pieces of wood. And this one here is a little, like I said, it's, it's a little different. It's, it's more of the pro, it really is a pro, you know, sumer uh, engraver or laser machine for doing different functions. It's a really stylish, nice looking one. Now the assembly is a little bit similar to the, the rest of them, I believe, or at least similar to the machines that I've seen in this style and design. So rather than sit here and bore you to death with, you know, oh, this is how to put it together, I'm gonna assemble it. And then when we come back, we can get into actually doing some really cool engraving projects. And I'm gonna show you some amazing, you know, projects that other people have been building using this particular laser because not only is this like i say a pro kind of thing but you can also get accessories that will increase what this thing can do for capacity such as engraving on a bottles and, and leather and stuff like that so it's going to be interesting it's an interesting machine we're going to check it out today so we're going to review this the atom stack a5 m50 pro machine uh, i want you to hang with me though because we're going to do some metal and just see if uh rust is actually blown away by a laser which i've seen the stuff on television and on youtube uh, advertising this laser gun that takes just does miracles and just takes rust off of metal so uh, i guess we're gonna put a little bit of that to a test because hey we have a laser here let's see if we can do the same thing or something similar to it all right, so voila, I have it assembled and I'm running it right now. We're just running off a small job. This machine may look similar to other ones, but there are inherent differences. And one of the things this one has immediately that I noticed, of course, is the Atom Stack A5 M50 Pro. So it's, it, it is a professional machine. So I expect things are gonna be a little bit different from it. And uh, I'll tell you right now, yes, they are a little bit different. Uh, there's, this has hard limits, and that is, there's a hard limit for the home location. So when this thing's finished, it will actually go to this corner of the machine and park because it has limit switches so it knows where home is or, or can be home in this case. The other thing it has is, uh, it does come with a TF car and all the usual things you expect. It also has an emergency stop switch, which I can tell you a long story about that. I spent hours yesterday trying to get lights uh, burned to talk to the machine and it wouldn't talk, it wouldn't work. I couldn't understand what was wrong. And I suddenly realized that the emergency stop switch, when pressed, locks down and stays locked. I didn't know that. So I had to actually turn the switch to unlock the emergency stop, which is cool, you know, it's just a feature, but it was a feature that uh, baffled me. The other thing that, unlike the other machines that I've had in the past, this one here, you could actually say bump it and it'll keep going. That's not, you know, that's not a bad thing necessarily, but it would be if you had a job going on, you bumped it by mistake you'll actually throw the whole print off because the machine will not shut down. It'll just keep right on going. So very different inherent differences with this one. There's the instruction manual right here. The, and it's not a very good manual. I'll be honest with you, it's kind of written in, you know, I don't know, Middle Eastern. I don't know who did the language uh, in it. It's not great. The, the pictures aren't very clear. If you've never put one of these together before, this could be a frustrating machine for you. If you have a little bit of experience with the uh, engravers, then this one here would not be that bad. It, it would just be a, you know, oh, I know exactly what I'm doing, throw it together, you know, get it up and running. Uh, the other thing I've noticed, this one seems to be the most noisy machine that I've had in here to date. And it's, I've checked it and the adjustments and everything, and it seems to be okay. It's doing a pretty good job but it's, it has a louder uh, feature to the motors when it's running. The stepper motors are a little bit noisier, that kind of thing, sort of surprised me. It has a really nice power on button, a reset button, and of course we have the cable coming in from the laptop so that we can tell the machine what we want done. The power cable is pretty normal, the power brick. The only bad thing is this thing here is up in the air right in front of where the stop switch is. I didn't really think much of that. Uh, if you're into carving and that sort of thing, this uh, little sort of touch screen system, uh, it can be pulled off the machine and it's magnetic 
and you have uh, operations which you can do with this with a TF card where you can actually uh, set it up for cutting or carving as they call it. So the differences are, I don't know, it's kind of like I guess the, you know, what you might like for a color of paint on a car, I might not like something like that. It, it's, a, it's more of a taste difference, I think, in some ways. The cable management is the same old, same old with uh, everything I've had in here. I'm not really pleased about the cable management situation with these 3D, the, uh, 3D printers. And this one here, the, this is an engraver, and it has the same sort of thing. The cables have to you know, run all over the place. I'm sort of hoping in the future maybe they'll get away from that a little bit. We're doing a really, uh, it's kind of a sloppy rendition of the Jurassic Park uh, logo for the new, I think it's Jurassic Park Dominion or something. I thought we'd just throw one together, but this is uh, an artist rendition of the logo. It's not copyrighted or taken from the logo, so it's not an exact uh, copy by any means. It's just kind of a similar, but not the same. The uh, assembly took me probably uh, not even an hour to throw this together, but partly because I'm experienced with throwing these machines and putting them together and assembling them, I had virtually no trouble at all putting it together. I think a no voice might stumble around a little bit trying to figure out you know, where things go, but the instruction manual, the pictures are too small, so again, if you're a no voice and you're looking at those pictures, I don't think they're very good. I think that uh, they probably uh, should have had something on the internet. I haven't checked just yet to see if there is somebody on YouTube or anyone that has a, you know, here's how to assemble it kind of a thing because I can see a few people might get a little hung up and say, oh, I don't understand how this goes or why this is going to work the way it does. The uh, machine itself is, like I say, it's a pro machine and what makes this a little bit more interesting is this one, you can accessorize it. You can buy things that they'll to help you do bottles, that sort of thing. There's, there's, you know, there's other things you can add to the machine to increase your capacity to what you want to burn in. Uh, the other thing we're going to be uh, looking at today, I guess, is some of that. I'm going to show you some examples of some of the uh, wood cutting and just some of the clocks and some of the, you know, basic things that engravers get into with these machines. But uh, we are going to do something else today too. Uh, I guess we'll call it the rough and ready test. I want to laser a rusty piece of steel and just see exactly what it does. It'll be, you know, interesting to, you know, see how that turns out. In fact, we might even use this print for it because this is a very dark uh, burned in print. I'm running at 80% and like I said, I'm running light burn. Light burn, I believe the subscription right now runs about $60 to sign up for it. And then I think you have it for life, but you can pay into it to get uh, an upgrade each year or an update or something each year, I believe. I think that's the way light burn works, don't. And depending on what you're, you're doing, I've got a, I'm behind the machine right now, so I can't even see the laser, but I do have the laser goggles on just, you know, to protect my eyes. Again, these are not super safe machines, or, you know, I wouldn't have these around the kitties kind of thing. This is sort of a, an adult supervision, more than adult supervision kind of a machine, I think. They're, they could be, you know, could cause serious harm to your eyes, that kind of thing. So you have to be very intent and careful and also lock up the room or area where you're going to be running a laser because you don't want people wandering in and, you know, oh, what's that? You know, well, that's a laser because it will damage, it could damage your eyes. It can even cause skin irritation or other problems with the uh, radiation and there's a lot of, uh, a lot of negative scope about these uh, running around the internet right now. So I'm not sure what the truth is and what not what is not the truth on it. The other uh, one I did today, this is where engraving kind of runs off a little bit. This is a, as you can see, the wood is very uneven. And I tried to burn in a Jeep, an old Jeep Willys uh, picture from Florida. Actually, I took this one. Uh, and it's it didn't come out very good. but. This is something you got to pre-plan, and that's you've got to take a look at what you're doing. Uh, if I had edited the photo first and cleaned it up first and made it more of a cartoony kind of thing, I probably could have etched it in pretty good. But because I just left it as a pure picture right off a JP, uh, JPEG file and put it right into the engraver, I got exactly what I got. The, the shortcut, of course, you know, looks like the shortcut. It's not bad. It's it's just not not great, <clears throat> you know. And there you go, back to the home position. Cool. 
I haven't checked their uh, the TF card that came with the machine yet to see what's on it. Uh, there was some files on it about the assembly, I believe, and there was a video on there that was pretty good about you know using one of these. Uh, the first complaint I have is, I guess, is the glasses. There were no goggles or protective eyeglasses with this machine when it came in. And again, like I said, it's a professional machine. Maybe they somehow thought you would go and buy your own goggles. They do tell you what sort of goggles to get, but I would have expected to see a basic pair of plastic goggles in the machine with the packaging and did not come in it. So that was a negative or a downside. The hard limits are, are pretty good. I liked some of the machines that did not have hard limits because I could you know, do my home location out in the center. The hard limits takes it to a home location here and it means I can you know, work with what I've got going on here. But when I want to adjust the height, it means that I have to shut the machine off and manually drag the laser over to the area where I want and then set the height of the laser. Again, a little different, but not, you know, not a deal breaker, I guess, at that point. Uh, this will cut, you know, cut through uh, different materials. Now, the, uh, it says it'll do leather and plastic and just a long host of different materials. Personally, I'm just more of a wood guy than I am anything else, but I, so I showed you with my Jeep picture. Uh, here's the one done on just a piece of uh, pine, and you can see the because the grain isn't so crazy or whatever, the, sh the shot, can, you know, it just comes out a lot better. So the smoother, more relaxed kind of board you have with less grainy, you know, things going on, you can get better results, of course. And the other thing we wanted to do today was I wanted to test out the idea of rusted steel metal to see how lasers take rust away from metal because I'm seeing something on the uh, internet and I wanted to try to test that craziness out. So I'm going to find a rusty piece of steel and we're going to engrave into it and just see what it did to the rust or if it does anything to rust. It, you know, The uh, one on the uh, internet <clears throat> that I've seen looks like magic. You know, it's turning the metal back to brand new or something using a laser. A little skeptical on that, but uh, let's try something and I'll find a flat piece of steel and when we come back, we're going to, I guess we'll use this as a, an example. We'll engrave the head of the dinosaur into the uh, metal and just see if, it, uh, if the rust is you know, blown away by the laser. I found a piece of uh, rusty metal. Don't try this at home, okay? I'm a professional. <laughs> and let's engrave uh, the uh, Jurassic Park logo on the saw or something here and just see if all this rust is blown away by the laser. Um, like I said, I'm very skeptical about that whole situation. So let's load it up and uh, let's see what we can do. And get the fatty part of the saw in here. And I'm gonna level it up a little bit so that it's fairly level with the machine. And let's see what we get. Okay. That'll tell us about where it's gonna burn it. Wow, it looks good. Oh yeah, okay. So we'll go ahead and hold on to your knickers. Here we go results when we come back <laughs> All right. okay it's done uh, I went and hit outside while this did it because I I'm not sure about how much radiation is coming off the machine <laughs> but, wow the rusted saw blade now has let's see if I can put that up there you can see the shiny metal the laser seems to have removed or at least blown away the rust that was on the saw blade there and engraved it of course with the <laughs> Jurassic Park logo <laughs> or else like I said it's, it's kind of a poor rendition of the Jurassic Park logo but it's close enough for what we need for examples this is really bizarre uh, can you guys get a good look at that I'm trying to hopefully we're focused in pretty good yeah it looks like it uh, destroyed the rust that was on the saw so uh, maybe there's something more to that uh, tool that we've seen all over the internet about blowing rust away with just using a wide beamed laser to do it. I guess it's just using heat and breaking the rust back down or something. Uh, boy, uh, that's amazing. I can't even explain it, but there it is. Wow, that uh, metal on that saw. Maybe we can get some comments below about the, the how that laser sort of dissipates the rust off the metal. I'm assuming it's just the heat thing or whatever, but it looks looks kind of cool what it did. Uh, I want to thank Adam Stack for sending the laser over to us so we could uh, check it all out, review it, and 
mess with this thing a little bit. It's uh, it is another engraving machine. It is a pro machine, and I just wanted to give you a heads up on that because anyone buying this, it's like this is more of a professional leans towards that professional type of uh, laser engraver. Again, it has that great big almost 16 inch by 16 inch kind of work area. So again, it's it's a large one now. I mentioned something about knocking this. Yeah, tie it down. Lock, lock it down with some, you know, with something because uh, I did bump this once and destroy at least one of my uh, jobs this morning when we were, you know, setting up and testing the laser. Uh, on the TF card, you can put your G code, put it in here, and of course, you know, run other projects off. And uh, I will put what I can for uh, links in the description below for Adam Stack and their engraving machine to where you can find this particular uh, machine. I'll see if I can find anything about the accessories too, because like I said, there are other things you can buy to accessorize this machine to take it to the next level, which is cool. The uh, laser itself, some people are going to ask whether it's a 5 watt laser. I believe it's a 5 watt diode laser, but I could not really find anything on the in the manual or the information on the laser much other than I think I said 5.5 watts but the actual power system on this is rated at 12 volts at 3 amps which means 36 watts because volts times amps equals watts there's an old formula for you hey thank you guys for watching coffee and tools please like share and subscribe man that metal thing that, that that's a mind blower and over and out